Hello and welcome to another episode. I'm Eric from Amateur Music Studio. Today I'm going to talk about how I've achieved the perfect sound or as perfect as it could be in my little home recording studio. It took me a while to come up with the solution because unfortunately none out of the box solutions could have worked for me. So I've started measuring the room when I've discovered that a really good studio grade monitors wouldn't sound good in my old setup. So I had to reconfigure the, the room and I've posted videos and I've done some other upgrades like buying ISO uh, acoustics wax mini for my monitors as well as putting some other insulation, extra insulation or as much as uh, was possible to put in this little space. But none of that actually resolved the massive issues I had with the low end where I had 11 dB worth of gain difference in between the peaks and deeps. So I had to look into all sorts of possible solutions including Sonarworks. I've tried Sonarworks previously and I remember I was quite pleased with the results uh, and again considering what I do I understand things like treeing off would be the best but unfortunately the entry level is £6,000 uh, is way too much for for my budget studio. I've downloaded the latest um, Sonarworks reference and I've done room correction and it worked great. Actually, it corrected the room so finally I could hear my monitors how they should sound or close to how they should be sounding. Now, unfortunately, with the way my room is set up, so say I've got like keyboards, and um, so when I play keyboard, how do I go about listening to it corrected as well? So I hear it correctly through the correction software. And unfortunately, Sauna works, or I couldn't figure it out. Even with my clever setup, and I've got a uh, Apollo Twin, which is normally super flexible and you can do lots of things in there. But I couldn't figure it out how I could run it live through the Sauna works reference so I could hear it correctly. Apart from one thing, I open a Logic session and I will open a channel strip with audio in from my uh, one of my interfaces. Then I will put a Sonarwork plug in there with all the corrections and literally monitor it out. And yes, that sort of worked. But here's the next thing. When I really want to record it, I have to disable the Sonarworks and then in order to record it so it translates well. And, you know, all this hustle, all these things, I have to open Logic. And again, I'm sort of linked to the computer. Whoever follows my channel, I'm trying to get rid of all the my connections to the computer as much as possible and really use it when I have to use it. I started looking into other possibilities and I've come up with this idea. I haven't actually seen many people doing it or talking about it uh, anywhere online on YouTube, but... I thought that should really work, so I thought I'll, I'll, I was going to give it a go. Um, I went and bought um, good quality, it's used, but it's a DBX uh, equalizer, and it's got 31 bands of EQing. This is what a room correction looks like on these EQ. I was kind of glad that I've used Sonarworks, because... Uh, not only I've learned how to actually use the room correction. I had this uh, room measuring microphone from Behringer, ECM8000, for quite a while now. But when it came to measuring the room response, I, I wasn't even sure how to measure it properly, whether I should be putting a mic like this or like that, facing one or the other. And I think using a studio reference, uh, um, stu Sonarworks studio reference uh, software, sort of gave me a lot of clues. And one of the very important things was that is I have to be calibrating each monitor individually. Because when I looked at how Sonarworks did it, and you, I could see that the response for each monitor was ever so slightly different. And that difference made the big difference to when you're listening to it. So when, when I listen to my music now through the equalizer and I then disable it, just bypass it, it the stereo image sort of like collapses. And I guess just because they, I'm not actually dead center, in, uh, uh, like position dead center in the room, I'm sort of shifted to one side ever so slightly. 
and plus the room itself not perfectly square it's got some weird steps at the back which there's nothing i can do about and i guess all these things make each uh, monitor respond slightly different to different frequencies so i've looked at the sauna works uh, reference calibration and I've actually mapped it on my equalizer that was my starting point and then I use the software rev uh, e r e w it's a free software which took me a while to uh, well it didn't really take that long but I still had to sort of watch a couple of videos how to calibrate and use it and stuff um, one of the things that I was sort of struggling a bit uh, is finding the uh, file for this microphone. I've managed to find it and I've got that file so whoever needs it I, I can share that with you. Uh, it's um, it's not uh, specific to this microphone but it's uh, a generic to this ECM8000 because they all have a slight boost in uh, certain frequencies it's nothing major and it's always nice to handle uh, those and tell your software that this is the response of the microphone and it did work well for me uh, downloading the generic file and using it in my software before i was testing both speakers with a microphone sitting in the middle and i would put the microphone like that uh, and then sonar works again gave me this idea that i would be measuring uh, uh, each monitor uh, with the microphone facing that monitor from the listening position at my ears height um, I've calibrated one speaker so I would do the test see where peaks and deeps corrected run a test again run a test again until I got to about two to three dB overall response across one monitor then I've done the same for the other one but then I've realized that there was another issue which I haven't thought about, that when I've calibrated these two monitors, they were like completely different in certain areas. When I've measured the, the response, I would get 500k, say 1 dB above the zero line, and the other one would be 2 dBs below the zero line. So you get this, it probably is probably going to cause some phasing issues and stuff. So I thought, well, that's that's not good so then I've started calibrating them to the point where they actually respond well but they also work with each other so I was trying to match their response in frequencies and all of this took me really long time to achieve like four probably three four hours of non-stop testing maybe even five hours I don't know I, I was just determined to get it done but when I finished the response lines from these two monitors were pretty much look alike similar very similar with some differences of course but i got 2 db across the range on both of them which is incredible and when i played the music just the test songs that i i used to sort of listen to when i was calibrating i was blown away but then the next thing i i didn't stop there and i went a bit further uh, of course, as as you may know, like Yamaha HS8, that would go down to about 32 hertz because of the large speaker. So I thought, well, these would only go down to 40. I still really want to hear some lower end if possible. I mean, they do go down to 30, but it's a roll off with a 6 dB slope, I think, uh, based on the measurements, maybe 6 to 8. And then I went and I just boosted. Um, uh, I just boosted 25 and 20 hertz on both channels. Oh, what a difference that made. Now, the monitor's really pumping out that low end. It's still not flat response. It's still minus 3 dB, but it's minus 3 at 30 hertz. It's incredible monitors. And I'm so glad that I've done this room correction. And as I said, I wasn't even sure this was going to work with equalizer like this. Now, again, I wasn't sure which equalizer to go with. I don't know when this uh, unit was built. And clearly, it's not in the perfect state. Uh, and it's got some issues, which I sort of tried to set it up, avoiding those problematic areas. But it's got balanced in, balanced out, which is important. 
because I get like zero noise in my monitors. Even if I crank it up properly, it's just dead quiet, which is incredible. All I have to say is that now I finally hear that I could do the stuff without thinking twice. And now I have, can record and mix and use all the processing that I want because this equalizer sits when I have the SSL6 mixer monitor out it goes right into my equalizer and then right into my monitors so everything I do before that everything goes through the EQ and my monitors and I'm not dependent on software there's no glitches with like something not connecting something's not uh, engaging I was actually considering I was heavily considering buying another Mac mini with another sound interface of some sort and then uh using like i said logic live session with eq in there or maybe actually using the sonar works but again sonar works wouldn't work because you can't just drive live input into the input and then monitor it through the sonar works or at least i couldn't figure it out so if you know how to do it please share your comments but again it's worth mentioning so i had the microphone so i didn't have to pay for it but i think when i bought it it was like i can't remember somewhere around 30 to 50 pounds brand new one and then i had this uh, equalizer for just over 100 quid including delivery so it still works out half the price from what the best offering there was on internet from sonar works with calibrated microphones and stuff uh, i think i i've seen one on reverb for like 220 pounds so you know considering all in all it's still a good saving i've achieved the results i wanted very happy with the setup and yeah it's kind of like i'm not worried about software updates i'm not worried about drivers mix matching not working it's solid unit it's there and hopefully it's going to work for some time so if you have any questions please leave them down in the comments uh, i would be more than happy to answer and address and maybe even make another video to explaining certain elements of my setup uh, to help you out uh, but otherwise i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching bye